Yeah, I saw my first pit bull in 1977 at a police dog training school, and I, I fell in love with the breed on that day. Uh, before that, I'd been heavily involved in the guard dog industry, and uh, I respect the dogs, but I'm kind of an easygoing uh, person, and what really attracted me to the pit bull was they could do the work of the guard dogs and not have a suspicious guardy nature. They, they greeted everyone as a friend until they proved otherwise. And I saw that as, as such a better way to be than uh, the suspicious German-type breeds, the Dobermans and the Rottweilers. That really appealed to me, and that was uh, when I fell in love with the breed. However, I did not, I was not in a position to own a, a pit bull until 1984. Can you talk about the term pit bull and where that came from? Sure. Uh, Pitbull is a shortened form for the registered name American Pitbull Terrier. A lot of people throw things around like there's no such thing as a pit bull, but it's like saying there's no such thing as a doby or a husky. They're just shortened words for the breed name. Uh, there, is, there is a breed pit bull. It's the American Pitbull Terrier, and the American Pitbull Terrier is a dog which has come pretty much uh, in a straight line from the uh, gripping dogs of the medieval and, and actually even before that. The, the gripping bulldogs were a well-established breed clear back in the 13th and 14th century. And uh, they really come through to today, uh, the, the breed which is the closest in relationship to those dogs is the American Pitbull Terrier. Um, many people include the American Staffordshire Terrier and the Staffordshire Bull Terrier, and that's certainly an acceptable thing to do because all three breeds uh, 150 years ago were the same dog. There's been nothing added or subtracted to any of those breeds to make them a different breed. They've just been bred along slightly different, and so they do have some slight differences in uh, temperament and appearance, but overall they're more similar than dissimilar. With the pit bull, uh, they have a naturally people-friendly temperament, and you have to do quite a bit of, uh, of quite cruel training to change that in a, in a well-bred pit bull, to make them suspicious. Uh, a, a pit bull will welcome a stranger onto your property and treat them civilly until they prove uh, that they're untrustworthy. These are, these are dogs that are basically uh, people-friendly dogs, and they're a lot of dogs. This is a dog who was bred to bring a 2,000 pound bull to its knees by grabbing it by the nose. So you can't have a dog like this, just like Great Danes or any of the large breeds. When you have a, a capable dog, you, you have to be careful and you know, teaching that animal to be suspicious or to bite anyone that comes on the property is, is quite foolish. And, and quite frankly, it puts the dog at risk. When people are, have concerns about pit bulls, and I certainly don't blame them, you cannot be bombarded with the kind of media attention that the pit bull gets and not wonder, well, what's up <laughs> with this? So I certainly uh, don't blame people for having concerns, uh, and I, I, think that, I, I think the people who actually take the trouble to try and look into um, what is the reality behind these myths? You know, I really congratulate them for, for having an open mind and doing that. There's only one thing that makes or breaks a fad breed, and that's the media. And once the media uh, prints stories about aberrant behavior from some of these dogs, that attracts in itself more high-risk owners who are attracted to just that. The Vic case is, is an important tipping point for the breed because for whatever reason, the media finally saw these dogs as the victims that they are. And when people hear about how these dogs are treated by dog fighters, um, I think people finally went, oh my gosh, you know, it's not a lot of fun to be a pit bull at a fighting camp. And all of a sudden, they could sympathize with a dog that they've never been able to sympathize with before. I think people want to love dogs, and they've wanted 
to love pit bulls, but they have not been allowed to in any way, shape, or form by the media. And so all of a sudden now, uh, I think this is a very important moment for the breed where people are finally realizing that these are dogs that are in fully, um, fully in the hands of the people who own them and that they are deserving of the respect and the appreciation um, that other breeds get. And have these dogs just killed summarily, it's going to send a very bad message to America's youth. It's going to say, these dogs really are disposable. Even the humane groups just say, kill them all. I think it's very important that people realize that the reason Vic was killing dogs in such horrible methods is because they didn't want to fight. They didn't want to be there. Um, not all pit bulls are, are terribly dog aggressive, and there's a lot. There are more dogs in a in a game bred litter that don't want to fight than there are that do, and these dogs um, should be given the respect that they would if it was a group of German Shepherds or Golden Retrievers or any other breed. They need to be individually evaluated and placed into responsible rescues. Uh, and I think it's, it's really important that that happen and that it not be okay to just kill the pit bulls.